If you watch my videos, you may notice that I have been playing a lot of Minecraft. Uh. <laughs> oh, oh my god! <laughs> and I have reasons on why I have been playing Minecraft. Minecraft is probably the best sandbox game. It gives us a very sophisticated world to modify to our own delight. Furthermore, you can practically do whatever you want, like become a baller. And because of those reasons, I wanted to try and make a world like that on my own. So here's my current progress. In order to understand how I make the terrain, we need to understand something called noise. No, I am not talking about what you hear, but I am talking about a collection of procedural generation algorithms that create randomized values generally from 0 to 1. Here are some examples. Each image here all use a different algorithm to create their own randomized image with a given seed. Now let's focus on the main ones I will use. The first one is what I will use to generate the biomes, and the second one is what I will use to generate the height of the terrain. Let's focus on the second one now. Since the second one is for height, I will want to make it modifiable so I can give biomes their own characteristics. In order to do this, I will multiply each value with some sort of intensity to create a more amplified or flatter world. I will also add it to an offset so I can manually set the base world height so I can give room for some underground creations. Now that we understand noise, we can now visualize it with the root of Minecraft. Cubes. And would you look at that boys, the first chunk. Now we can continue and generate even more- Hold it right there. I cannot do this method because it is unoptimized and broken. If the difference of height is too large, it will create seams in the terrain, and the computer gives one batch per cube, and if there are thousands of cubes, it will easily bog down our performance. So instead of instantiating a bunch of cubes every frame at the rate of modelers deleting default cubes, I instead created a mesh for every chunk. The way it will work is for every block in a chunk of data, the code will check around the block to see if it is next to an air block. If it is next to an air block, it will create a face therefore culling, or hiding, the interior saving a lot on performance. I also use threading for the creation of the data so it is even faster. So with all of this, after about 3 hours of creating read-only variables and debugging, Hey computer. Yes sir. Paste the code for cube data. Pasting the code for you. Alright, uh, I created the first procedural chunk mesh. And after that, I textured it. I would later down the line replace the texture with something more detailed. Anyways, moving on. When I successfully made the first proper chunk, I then created a grid of chunks. And when I explored it with the character controller, I thought to myself, Hey, this is lame. So I got this noise library on GitHub, link in the description, and replaced the Perlin noise function I was using as a test with the noise algorithm I mentioned when explaining noise. I also used the biome noise algorithm to map out the biomes. The last thing I did was implement 3D Perlin noise to create caves, but I would later remove it. Anyways, here's the result. You can distinguish between the biomes by the surface blocks. I didn't classify any of those since I was just testing it out. After mapping out the biomes, I then influenced the blocks in their own biomes with their own separate noise algorithm. But there was something wrong. A problem with just giving blocks their own height based on their biome is when a block from a certain biome is next to a block from a different biome, the heights will drastically be different. To simplify it, the different noise values from different biomes do not tile properly. So a solution to this is an image filtering algorithm known as bilinear interpolation. It sounds pretty scary at first, but when you see how to code it, it is very simple. The way it works is getting the four corner values of a chunk, interpolating between the lower corner values and top corners, based on the point you want to find, and with the interpolation products from all the corners, you interpolate between the interpolations to get the value you want. So with that in place, the world would look much smoother.
After smoothing out the terrain, I wanted to have some fun with it. So what I did is create terrain editing. Okay guys, welcome to my new Minecraft Let's Play. Today we're going to be building a house. So this is my house, guys. It's in a nice little valley. If we... If we go into our house... Yeah, look at that. We have a nice view of the world. Wait. It's not infinite. That's right, guys. You heard the pro MC plays. The world is an infinite. And that was the next thing I did. And here's the result. Now you can run in this bootleg world for as long as you want. Now, for the final thing I created in the Minecraft clone is the ultimate F3 menu. As you can see, it displays some basic information about the player. It shows the general position, block information, and some system diagnostics on the right. And would you look at that, all the things I was able to create for a Minecraft clone definitely did not take me two months. I would have tried to add trees and vegetation to the mix, but I am still banging my head on the keyboard for that, so that is all for now. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.